Hey guys, Wyatt Claypool here. What I'm about to show you in just a moment here has been true for quite a while, but I have to admit it stuns me every single time I see this statistic. You probably are aware of how badly the Liberals are doing in the polls these days. I do talk a lot about polling. They poll as low as 21% in some polls or as high as 26 or 27% in others, even those 27% are becoming extremely rare. But when you actually ask people, do you want to see Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberals re-elected? This is being asked to every person answering this poll, everyone who said that they were voting Liberal. You only get 14% of people actually saying that they want to see the Liberals get re-elected to another government. So in this Abacus data poll, 23% of people said that they were voting Liberal. Only 14% said they actually want them to win. That is not a vote of confidence. That is basically just saying, I like my local guy, but I wish Trudeau would pack sand. This is why, and I've brought this up in a couple of videos now, you have people like Liberal MP Alexandre Mendez from the riding of uh, Brassard near Montreal saying that, yeah, my own constituents want Justin Trudeau to step down and let someone else be leader. It, like, There's a lot of people who identify as liberals, and when a pollster says, who are you going to vote? They just say liberal. But when you ask them the deeper question, do you actually like these people? That's when it becomes a hazier question for them. It be the, the answer becomes uncertain. And part of this is because obviously the federal liberals have performed terribly on policy since they've been in government. They are just activists through and through. They always take the activist path over the practical path. What, what this program isn't working? Just double the budget. Oh, uh, we like people can't afford homes? Well, inflate the inflate the market even more because let's only ever try and meet demand, like the, the, the demand for housing with more money given to people. Basically, people can't afford houses, so why don't we just cut them a check so they can buy a house, which has never worked in human history because it's a supply problem. But another problem is not just that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has become unlikable because he's completely aloof in, in, like, in the face of all the problems. Another problem is the fact that the Liberals caucus is just full of obnoxious people. Back when the Liberals formed government in 2015, obviously I didn't like them. I'm a conservative, or at least a BC conservative for the moment. The thing with the Liberals is that in 15, they had a lot of professional people. I didn't agree with them, but Bill Morneau was a professional. Jane Philpott was a professional. Jody Wilson-Raybould was a professional. Even, I would say, Catherine McKenna was kind of a professional in the sense that she was annoying, but she was very corporate in her tone. These days, we have like student union activists acting as liberal government ministers. The quality of people in the liberal government has dipped heavily. And so I just want to talk about some of them today because they make me laugh. They are just funny people. They are, they are just so performative. It hurts. So I want to talk about first one of my quickly becoming one of my favorite liberal MPs, Jenna Suds. And I will say before we get into this uh, video of her, and I'm going to go through a few, I am never more aware that somebody is reading a script than when Jenna Suds is talking. Every time she's talking, it's like it's the first time she read her, uh, her, like her notes off a cue card. It's the first time she's ever read her speaking notes. And so it always comes off as a middle school presentation-y as possible, as it is possible. And oh goodness, there is a woman in the back wearing a mask for some reason in the year 2024 because she just cares so much about protecting people or whatever. So Jenna Suds here says, let's be clear, conservatives plan, uh, the conservatives plan to cut essential support we deliver, we're delivering for Canadians. Why, why do Canadians need the support now? But they didn't need them before the liberals came into power. It's almost like you've hurt people. It's almost like you're bankrupting people and now... You have to invent government programs in order to help basically heal people or help treat people who you've hurt. That's like this is like the equivalent of giving people like helping trying to like um, fix somebody's arm after you broke it. Ten dollar a day child care saving families thousands of dollars. National school food program ensuring that children are not at school hungry. Mr. Speaker, you heard it here. They plan to cut the supports that Canadian families need. It's just bad. Here's another one. 
Here's another one of Jenna Suds. She is going to become your favorite MP2. Here she says, Canada's inflation rate has reached the 2% target, but there's more work to be done. Our plan is working to make life more affordable for Canadians. Also, uh, it wasn't 2%. I think it was 2.5% since I last checked, unless this month is only 2%, in which that's not good. Because guess what? That 2% is on top of the years where we had 7% and 9%. So even though 2% is usually considered a decently kind of low rate of inflation, that inflation is on top of everything else. What we actually need is we need like negative 2% inflation. We need to actually reduce the amount of dollars in the economy. The, the government, if it actually wanted to help people, what they could actually do is take dollars out of the economy that it has injected in that are being spent on nonsense, take them and basically just burn them. That would actually make people better off because it would lower the supply of just easy money in the economy. But let's hear Laurel, uh, sorry, not Laurel Collins, Jenna Suds convinced us that they're doing a great job. Great news today, as we've heard from the Bank of Canada, that inflation rates have gone down again, now at 2%. This is evidence that our plan is working. This is working to make life more affordable for you. Still more work to do, but we're committed to delivering for Canadians. This is ballot box poison. The way she talks to people makes you feel like she thinks you're five years old. And, and maybe part of it's because she's like the minister of like childcare or like youth or something like that. And you'll hear her talking to one of her constituents and let's be straight up, every single time they try and market one of these programs that they have as like helping people and look, we've we've cut this person's cost on childcare expenses. I'm like, wow, you took taxpayer money and gave it to one specific person and they feel better off. One, the childcare programs aren't even working because all it's doing is reducing the amount of childcare spaces available because when the compensation, uh, the compensation like, uh, look, like, not algorithms, but the compensation plans for childcare uh, providers who are doing the $10 a day program, which I believe they have to do now, when that doesn't fit, the compensation does not fit the location they're in. It doesn't it doesn't uh, like fit with the amount of staff they have because they're just big, basically giving blanket compensation. No matter where your daycare is or anything, you could be a downtown location in Toronto and your compensation is going to be the same as someone who's just running a daycare out of their house in a suburban area. They're trying to adjust it more now, but it's terrible. And all it does is it helps a small minority of people at the expense of everybody else. And just because you have a good testimony doesn't mean that it's actually a good program. But here's Jenna Suds now talking down to another person and that person trying to recover the uh trying to recover the video you know one point when i talked to families and mm -hmm. have been chatting here in, yeah. in waterloo region the impact of the 50 percent cost oh, reduction 50 percent is like mind-blowing yes <laughs> like it's like over eight thousand dollars a year right it's, yeah it's substantial when we had like forecasted like what it would cost to send coal to daycare and like yeah. what those choices would be yeah uh, we when the subsidy came in and like mm -hmm. different centers started taking it on like it radically changed and we're like okay like that money can go towards an education sure, fund can yeah. go towards activities and mm -hmm. Matthew and I are older parents, if you will. We started ah. a little later in life, but a lot of my- Who also set this up? Well, you don't really need to hear the rest of this. Who set this up where they're like, they have a microphone with absolute no sensitivity at all, or the sensitivity is like turned way up and they're just microphone peaking the entire time. But Jenna Suds is there and like, and we've been giving out subsidies to some parents and people see that as very substantial like why are you talking to an adult woman like this it's patronizing who could guess why the liberals aren't inspiring people anymore it's because they have justin trudeau as their only real recognizable figure with like christian freeland as maybe the closest second person that canadians can kind of of uh identify i think when they pulled people with like photos of different ministers and said who is this like less than 50 percent of people could identify even who christian freeland was but nobody knows who jenna suds is and this is just not inspiring stuff this is obnoxious let's get to somebody else one of our, our other favorite mps karina gould who only knows how to patronize to people she only knows how to do substitute teacher voice very upset with one of her one with one of the kids not doing what she told them to do 
you can't talk to your opposition this way because guess what? Your opposition these days represents about 50% of Canadians, close to 50% of Canadians, and you're going to talk down to them? That's basically talking down to the people that vote for them. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives keep talking about women, but they don't support policies that support women. Right. Why are they against affordable child care? If they care about that single mother, they should be supporting affordable child care. Mr. Speaker, if they care about women's economic freedom, they should be supporting child care. If they care about women's rights, they should be supporting a woman's right to choose. The real fake feminists, Mr. Speaker, are the people who sit on that side of the aisle. Right. Oh, oh, they should be supporting a woman's right to choose. Like, who, who is... What what abortion ban have the conservatives proposed? I'm pro-life. I actually think they would help themselves with support if they proposed something like ending sex-selective abortion, because that's a policy that the liberals, for some reason, can't vote in favor of. They can't vote in favor of increased criminal penalties for assaulting a pregnant woman or killing a pregnant woman. Absolutely insane. The, the liberals' position on abortion is... A, the, the goblin position. They have an absolute goblin position on abortion. It's just abortions all the time for any reason, and that's what feminism is all about. That's no, that's not what it's about. Uh, and the conservatives aren't running on it. But the thing is that they don't have anything if the conservatives aren't running on it. But because I've ripped on Karina Gould enough, and you've seen how she talks, it's not. It's not good. It's not someone that should be in front of the camera. But again. The liberals kicked out all the slightly competent people years ago, and all the now all they have is people like Arif Arani here, the, the minister of microphone peaking, apparently based on how poorly the odd how poorly the audio is done in this video. Also, can I just point out, Arif, get your coats tailored. He's not a big guy. He's not like somebody who's like big in the belly. But for some reason, his coat here is holding on for dear life because he did not get it big enough. It's like actually puckering the entire time he's talking and trying to move his arms. I spent the summer talking to constituents about what matters to them the most. Back here on Parliament Hill, ready to keep fighting for Canadians, to protect the progress that we've made, to deliver for Canadians in terms of their needs, and in terms of my ministerial role, to help continuously keep Canadians safe, to protect those who are vulnerable. See you inside. While the Conservatives shout slogans, we are going to keep Canadians safe. I like how he threw that in at the end, like, well, the conservatives so shout slogans, we're going to keep Canadians safe. One, he means by keep Canadians safe, he means censor the internet. He means make people like put ankle monitors on people at home because they might say something hateful. That's what he means by keep Canadians safe. But he does that whole while they shout slogans thing when the first half of the video of him talking was platitudes about talking to people and doing our job, working hard and keeping people safe. What are you talking about, Arif? You're absolutely what you are describing in question period there when you're trying to fire back at conservatives. But now let's end off by talking about Kamala Kara, uh, another liberal MP from the riding of who cares? Uh, you know, a, a place that, I, that probably doesn't even want me to name them out of pure embarrassment that this is their current MP. Again, another question period answer where she's going to start bringing up, you know, uh, women's rights and reproductive rights and whatnot with no real position on what she's in favor of and what the conservatives are against. Again, the conservatives aren't even bringing up pro-life issues. If anything, that's one criticism I could make that the conservatives have kind of clamped down on some of the pro-life members and just told them, like, nothing for now, don't say anything for the next year. I think the conservatives could actually punch past 50% of the vote if they went after the liberals on having the craziest positions on abortion. Again, pro-sex selective, anti-protecting pregnant women by like not giving a crap if a pregnant woman gets assaulted, having no upgraded charges for the criminal there. They are not against any other, like they're against like abortion all the way up to the ninth month. It's absolutely insane, their position. So I don't think the conservatives should be scared of them, but she's going to be here and try and absolutely fear monger over nothing nothing the conservatives aren't saying anything but they don't have any real good policies to point at so their strategy this is i'm not saying this because she's a woman men and women in the liberal party their strategy is being shrill it is a 
bit rich to hear the member of the Conservative Party pretend to care about feminism when their own leader was doing misogynistic hashtags That's on their right. videos to attract yeah. men who hate women. Not Mr. Speaker, it was anything but feminist when they bring forward backdoor legislation to ban abortion and to take away women's right to choose right. their own rights, Mr. Speaker, or when they all voted against increased funding to combat gender-based violence or to Dang. support survivors. Mr. No, no, what? That is one of the most disgusting things I've ever heard. So do you know? Do you, uh, you do you know when she said when she talked about backdoor legislation? The backdoor legislation was upgraded sentencing for people who kill pregnant women or assault pregnant women by saying that you're also basically hurting the unborn child, and there should be upgraded sentencing for that. She then pivots to saying they they don't want to combat gender based violence. What did you just vote against? What did you just say that your liberal government voted against because it was backdoor legislation to ban abortion? Was you not caring about gender-based violence, the assault on pregnant women? What actual just stains of people here? Mr. Speaker, their leader doesn't care about women or equality. He only cares about himself. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, rabble, 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 rabble. Great statement. Oh, uh, he, he doesn't care about women. He doesn't care about Canadians. He only cares about himself. It's weak. It's weak and obnoxious. Who who could guess why nobody wants to vote for these people? They don't know. They don't appeal to anyone outside, not of a like a Toronto or Montreal bubble, which is maybe what I would have said a year and a half ago. They don't appear appeal to anyone who isn't from like the cocktail party circuit in Montreal and Toronto. People who work on Bay Street. Now, now, that's not because I'm trying to do this whole, oh, they're in league with bankers or something like that. I just mean people who are so fabulously wealthy that they can have luxury beliefs. Luxury beliefs about you know, the, the fact that the conservatives are trying to bring in backdoor like bans on, on abortion. Oh, and they're climate deniers. And they care about all these fringe issues because they're, they're too wealthy to care about the actual state of the economy. Because they're going to do fine no matter if the economy sucks or doesn't suck. At the same time, they're talking about this. People can't afford groceries, rent, all this other stuff. And they're like uh, enrollments in hockey in Canada, around the country, depends on the province, are down like 50% because people, parents can't afford it. We're in Canada and we're only going to have half the kids being enrolled or registered to play hockey this next year. Insane. But they want to talk about the uh, climate change and let's talk about a, a women's right to choose and let's talk about. Let's talk about child care programs and our different subsidy programs that are working hard for Canadians. Goodness. Ugh. Who could tell why nobody likes these people? Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. If you want to sign up on my website for recommendations on, you know, who you can vote for in nomination races, because I, I tend to, if I hear about nomination races, I like to see who the candidates are. And what I'll then do is be able to message or email anybody who I can see in that postal code area and just say, hey, well, this is why I've noticed about this local race or this municipal race. It basically allows me to reach out to you guys if need be. I'm not going to bombard you with emails. I haven't sent a single email to anybody who signed up onto this list yet, but you can go onto my website, wyattclaypool.com, linked in the description below, if you want to sign up onto the campaign organizing list. And if you want to donate to the Give, Send, Go, I also have that linked in the description below as well as pinned at the top of the comments being sued by a billionaire uh, Chinese developer over literally nothing. It's suing for defamation. And he had over two and a half years. We're actually coming up almost on three years now. He hasn't actually filed any evidence. And so we've just been waiting flat footed for him to make, make a new move. And we're getting close to the point where we're probably just going to apply for summary judgment because this is the most frivolous case I've ever been in. And I've been in a couple of cases now. Uh, but it's cost me more than thirty-two thousand dollars because no matter how frivolous it is, Cal uh, not Calgary, Alberta doesn't have anti-slap legislation that allows you to apply very early into a case to basically show the case to a judge and basically say you can tell that this is complete nonsense and they can end it early. In Alberta, the case could go on for two years and you can't do anything about it. Anyways, that's it for me today, guys. Have a good one.